Hey, everybody. Um, okay. Uh, this is a quick pop-up uh, little live broadcast I decided to do here. Uh, I don't expect there to be anybody showing up for this thing right now. But, uh, yeah, okay, we're live. All right, cool. Um, yeah, but I decided that I was going to turn around and uh, do this uh, just on the spur of the moment. Uh, for the simple reason, I got something in today and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, yeah, just give me a second here. I got to switch on the other microphone over here. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be too much, uh, you know, crossfade and whatever the heck they call it. Um, yeah, um, as you can see right now, there's nobody in the live chat, so... <clears throat> I just figured I'd put this up anyway, just to see what the heck happens. Okay. Um, basically, on the 19th, which was ba -ba 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 -ba, last Wednesday, okay, last Wednesday morning, uh, into Thursday, you know, like Wednesday night, actually it was Thursday morning, um, because when they turned around and they, they did this, it was the place that I ordered this thing from is out in Hawaii. So when I ordered it, it was already um, Thursday morning here, the 20th. But it was still the 19th out there in Hawaii. So they turned around and they put it down as being ordered on the 19th. Okay, that's cool. I can understand that. Um, you know, they're, they're doing local time. Um, I saw this on, um, I think it was Grim Green's, uh, one of Grim Green's vlogs or something like that. And, um, I was intrigued. I mean, really, really super intrigued by this thing. And I started looking around and I found the place out in Hawaii, eSiggity, um, dot com, and they had it for twenty nine ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine, plus a couple of bucks and plus like almost four dollars in shipping, came to thirty three bucks of change. Oh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta do this. Otherwise, this is going to turn around. This is going to be driving me crazy. This is going to drive everybody crazy here. So just bear with me for a minute. I have got to go in here and shut this darn phone down. Do not disturb. Total silence. Boom. There we go. <coughs> mm. Sorry. Okay. What this mod, what this is, is the new CETO, C-E-T-O, R-D-A, and Squonk R-D-A from Cthulhu, okay? Um, this thing really caught my attention. The reason for that is, hey, hello there. I can't see who that is. Oh, hey, Stephen. How you doing? Um, this thing really caught my attention because when Phil Basardo and Demetrius was, were over in uh, Stuttgart, uh, they, came, they did a thing about a new... Um, yeah, I can't really see that too well. Uh, yeah, okay. Um... They did a thing about a new type of tank that just came out. And that tank really turned around and had a similar, um, had a very similar design to what this tank, that this dripper that Cthulhu came out with. And the fact that it comes out with a squonk pin and squonk tube. Uh, I was like, boing, 
I, I was like, whoa, whoa, Jackson. Okay, hold on here. This is like totally brandy new here, and, and, and I got to get a copy of this. Well, I ordered it. It came in today. Today. Okay, while I was at work, it came in. And yeah, I, be, I was keeping an eye on it, and I knew it was coming in. And when I opened this thing up, uh, I was like, wow. Okay, so I had to turn around, and I, I, just, I just had to pop on here. I don't know if I'm going to try wicking and coiling this thing while I'm online here with you guys or not. I, I haven't decided yet. This is basically just like a quick show and tell that I decided to do. Um... I haven't, this, this is totally free form. This is not planned. This is totally fly by the seat of my drawers. Okay. So yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do here is in a second or two, I'm going to switch over to the build cam where I've got the guest of honor sitting and waiting. Okay. And I have to cut off this microphone that I'm using here right now. Because if I don't, you're going to turn around and you're not going to be able to understand a damn thing that's going on. Okay? It's going to be totally, Mwah! you're going to blow your mind. Okay? I already tried this a couple of times with uh, local recordings and the audio came out sounding like total garbage. To be polite about it. So, let me do this transition here for a minute. And, all right, let me transition over now. I'm going to head over to the bill cam. And I'm going to disable this mic. Okay, here we are. All right. All right. So I hope you can hear me on this thing. Actually, let me turn the gain up here a little bit so that way you can hear me a little bit better. All right. How's that sounding to you guys? Steven, how's that? How's that? How's the audio sounding to you? All right. Okay. All right. So what I'm doing here, what we're looking at here, this is the box that the Cedo RDA from Cthulhu just came out in. Okay, uh, of course it came in the package and all that other good funky stuff. But I, I mean, this is like really cool. Um, so when you open it up, you got to turn it over. Let's let's take a look. That's the box itself. Has nothing on here other than Cedo RDA Cthulhu and the Cthulhu emblem. Okay, so you turn it over. And you pop it open like this, and it has this little, like, Chinese coin here holding this tassel on in place. And you get the authenticity sticker in here. You get a couple of sheets of uh, 300 denier stainless steel wire mesh. And you get the goodie bag. Now, the goodie bag... Let me just get the tweezers out here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I'm just going to dump this out here so we can see everything that's in here. Okay, you get all of your different uh, O-rings and stuff like that. So you don't need to see your O-rings. You've seen one O-ring, you've seen them all. So I'm just going to throw those back in here. Now you get two extra screws. These are Phillips head screws. These are used on the mesh clamping post, okay? They give you two extras here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the kind of stuff you never hear on my, on my uh, reviews because I spend a lot of time editing this stuff out. So all these, these wonderful sounds that you're going to be hearing, that's me normally. Oh, little blue Phillips head screwdriver. Throw that back in there. Now, this is a 510, a goon to 510 uh, drip tip adapter, okay? Uh, it sits a little bit proud because you have this little space here. Um, 
that uh, allows you to get your nail in there to be able to pop this out and if you want to. Okay, so you got that there. Now you have your squonk pin here, okay? Uh, it's got a straight blade uh, screwdriver uh, hole in here, plus the, the squonking hole. Now that's a pretty small little squonking hole, so we'll see how that works. And then you have the squonk tube. Now, this goes in only one way. You have the screw threads here that fit down on this, like so, once you feed it in. And then you have your holes here for your juice to come out and go into the, <coughs> excuse me, into the, uh, the cotton. And then you have a flathead, um, you have this little flathead cutout here that you need to use a, a slightly wider screwdriver than your standard Coilmaster flathead screwdriver. Um, as a matter of fact, when I tried this a few minutes ago, uh, before coming on here, uh, I had to break out my uh, old jeweler screwdriver set, <clears throat> and I had to get the the widest tip that they had in order to be able to fit it in here and be able to turn put this in. So yeah. We're going to leave these here out and we're going to put all this stuff to one side here. And authenticity sticker. Okay, that's the, let's, I want to take a look at this, this mesh. I've never played with mesh before, okay? I, I don't like the, normally like the idea of a Jenny style tank. Uh, I've never played with mesh, so I've never, I, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. Um, before I actually do the review on this, I'm going to have to turn around and do some research on mesh. But this is, ooh, this is something. Wow. That's, I don't know if you can see through it. This, this is see-through. It's, it's pretty tight weave, but it's still see-through, as you can probably see there from my hand underneath. Okay, okay, come on, you little guy. Come on, get out of here. Ant attack. Yeah, every every June we have this major rager ant attack here. And these little guys constantly keep showing up on my build mat. They want to, they want the cameo. Oh, I'm telling you, driving me crazy. Not to mention the fact that every time I go to try and sit down and watch a video or something like that, and I'm sitting here after work trying to eat, these guys are coming up to say hello, like, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, we want something to eat here too, you know? Uh. Okay. All right, I broke out my squonk mod, uh, the Steam Crave squonk mod. <clears throat> I just did a review on. Uh, so, just in case, because, you know, even though... I bombed it for the temperature control on here. Um, I still prefer the temperature control on this than to something, something to any of the other squonk mods that I have here that have temperature control, and that's only one other one. So, oh, that reminds me. Duh, I need to turn around. I need to get a battery. Hold on a second. Uh, battery, 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 battery. Battery, I need a battery. Alright. Okay. Okay, I will try to keep it on screen, Stephen. Okay. Um <coughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, battery. VT Sony VTC5. Put that there. Okay. Um here's the little baby. Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five air holes here and tiered in like a water drop shape. Um, this is a little bit of a whistler. Uh, it comes with an Ultim Goon style uh, drip tip. This is a Goon style uh, system here with the uh, O-rings here inside the, uh, inside the air uh, adjustment. You do have air adjustments. I did open this up, and I did lube this up with a little bit of VG, but you'd never know it from the way this thing's going here. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta break this out. Okay, so you got the adjustments here. You can adjust it from all five being open to one. 
Yeah, one closed down. Two closed down. Three closed down. And four closed down. Nope, oh, nope. Uh, when you get one, oh, when you get down to one, you start getting the other one on the other side. So the most number, the the most number that you can get closed down is three, uh, before you start getting air hole over here opening and having air hole over here opening. So I guess you you have to have a minimum of two air holes open. <clears throat> okay, so let's turn this back so we get all of them open here now. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Yep, okay. That looks good. Okay, let's throw this on here so we can get this out. Like I said, I did lube this up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, here's the deck. Um, you have your two uh, posts here for your mesh. Now, I did measure the distance between these two screws, the inside part of these two screws, it measures exactly uh, 10 millimeters or one centimeter between here and here. But the way I th I'm thinking about wicking this, I wanna make the mesh here, the, the width on the mesh, maybe like 9.5, so that way you can put it in on one side, feed it through the other side, and be able to uh, adjust so you don't have to have this big mucking ball of cotton in here. Okay, now you see you have two nice big, uh, you have this nice big crescent shaped uh, juice well in here. Now from the top part of the, uh, the squonker, uh, the, the base, okay, to the bottom of this juice well is, what did I measure it as? Oh, God. Hold on. I can't even remember my own name sometimes, especially after a day's worth of work. All right, so let's uh, pull this down and measure this thing here. And... Do, 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 do. Bring this down. Just like so. And we have... 8.12, 8.3 millimeters. Yeah, 8.3. It actually says 8.25, but average is out to about 8.3 because there's a couple of spots on there where it's a little lower in one spot or the other. So, yeah, 8.3 millimeters from the top part of the base here, uh, the, the, the dripper base down into the, into the juice well. Um... You can see here they have Phillips head screws uh, holding the mesh in place, like so, on both sides. Um, the air top here is very nicely domed. I mean, this is like super nice dome in here. Uh, it is very smooth. The, the metal work on this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it is very nicely done. As you can see, it's n relatively nicely polished. No, whoops, I'm putting it on the wrong way. Duh! Okay, so let me get this. These O-rings are very tight. And I want to open that up. Yeah, there we go. All five are open. Oh, I hate this VG all over the place here. But if you don't put the VG on, you have a problem with, I mean, when I opened this thing up and I didn't have any VG on these things, these O-rings were like super tight. Okay, so that's that, that's that. All right, so let's take this off. Take a look down here at the base. All right, now the base here, the 510 center pin is protruding quite a bit. Um... I would say this would be pretty good to turn around and put onto a um, onto a um, mech mod, onto a um, hybrid mech mod. As you can see here, you have CEDO RTA, uh, serial number, CE mark, stone vape in a bin. Um, this screw here holds the negative terminal on, 
and the center pin here holds the center the center positive post in the place right in here okay so um, yeah that's pretty much it I want to turn around I want to take this thing out again so you can see how this thing takes out because I've already broken this thing down once and you unscrew this here like so take this out now you have a you have two separate individual insulators here one that the 510 center pin sits into and another one in here that isolates the center post from the rest of the deck as you can see <clears throat> excuse me um, this fits in like so okay and it only fits in one way you can't fit it into any other way so let's get this here put this back in here before I wind up losing it and this thing is totally useless stick that in there like so there we go okay so now squonk pin put that in here like this put that in like so yeah I'm putting this in first because the last time I was playing with this thing it was driving me crazy trying to put this thing into place here so put that in like ah duh I am all thumbs today after a hard after a long day's worth of work I just I, I'm just like duh practically brain dead when I come home so let's put this in like so and you screw this in and as you can see even the squonk pin sticks out this is sticking out by at least two millimeters away from that insulator and away from the top part of this 510 so now this comes in black as well as the silver um, I got it in the silver because I didn't want to have to put this uh, wind up putting this thing into my ultrasonic cleaner and having the uh, the black paint come off on me maybe possibly I don't know I didn't want to turn around and take the chance so I, I just got the black, uh, silver and said the heck with it okay now as I said before you have the two way you have two different ends here on this you have the screw um, slot here and you have the thread part there so we're gonna take this and we're just gonna put this on here like so <clears throat> and then you take your nice wide tipped straight blade screwdriver and you put this in like this now what I'm looking at here is this thing screws in like this you put your cotton in here if you just pack the cotton in here that's not going to turn around that's not going to wick really well so I'm thinking that we're going to have to turn around and have to keep this out and put it in after you've got the cotton wicked onto here. And after you've got the cotton installed on here. So let's take this off. Put that there. Now, if you were just using this as a regular dripper, you could just take a nice big ball of uh, cotton, um, kind of like this native wick stuff here, um, and just make a nice big ball of it and put it in the middle and then tighten your, your mesh around it. But if you're doing the squonk, this is going to be a little bit of a thing. Let me just get out a couple of Muji pads here. I think this is going to probably need a couple of Muji pads. And, yeah, let's see something here. Okay, this is going to be like this. And we need to have a little extra going in there, going in down into it. Going down into that juice well. So, let's see. Put that there like that. And... I'm thinking probably about this much left over here. So, let's 
looking like it's almost close to half a pad. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cut this and cut this pad in half here. And let's take this off. And take this one off here like this. Oops, sorry, I've got I'm off screen. Duh. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, let's put that on there like that. And yeah, good. Let's take another half, the other half of the pad. And strip the skin off of that. All right, let's try something here. Like I said, I've, I just got this in this afternoon, so I have, this is like the first time I'm playing with it here. And let's try rolling this up here. Oh, is, that's not gonna work too well. That's gonna be a pain in the butt to turn around and get That's going to be a pain in the butt. Hmm. Wait a minute. I don't need to have it into the juice well because I'm going to be squonking with this thing. So... Let's just make this the exact size. Because I'm going to be squonking with this thing, so I don't need to have the extra juice well there. And if I do put in the extra juice well, I can always want to make use of that juice well. I can always just throw some extra cotton in there. Let's just try something here. This is the kind of stuff you never see on camera on you doing when you're seeing the reviews because this is the kind of stuff that when you get something new like this, you're playing with it and, and nobody ever sees. So I figured I'd just give you a little bit of an insight into, into, the, into my world when I'm playing with something new. And do that, and then we'll put that there like so, and we'll just roll this up like this, like so. That's a lot of cotton in here. This is a lot of cotton. Cut some of this back so I can find the hole to screw this into place. Okay. That's good. Let's take another pad here. Cotton is cheap. Cotton is easily available. So we're going to take this and we're going to cut this. Sorry, I'm off camera again. Yeah, that's you're right, Stephen. They did turn around and when they worked with mesh um, for Genesis, um, when you're doing working with a Genesis atomizer, you actually have to take a butane torch and take it to the mesh because you have to oxidize it and you have to get a layer of burnt oxidation on there because the coil gets wrapped right to the mesh. Okay, and when you have stainless steel wrapped onto the mesh, uh, onto your uh, coil wrapped onto that, this thing here would short out the 
the coil in a New York heartbeat. That's why it's oxidized. Uh, the oxidation actually puts up a layer of insulation between the mesh and the coil. So that way the mesh can actually be used as a wick to wick up um, to wick up your juice from the um, from the tank area or wherever, yeah, from the tank area. Uh, and it needs to be rolled tight from what I understand. Um, I saw those same videos that you saw and that's what I was able to take away from it. And, and that's one of the reasons why I, de I decided a long, long time ago when I first started, va when I first started doing vaping and stuff, I was not going to play with a Genesis style tank because of all of that kind of craziness. I, I'm a lazy, I'll tell you right now, I'm a lazy son of a bitch, okay? And I, I'll do a little work for something if it's gonna bring me some, you know, if it's gonna, if it, that little bit of work is gonna bring me something really good. But when I turn around and when I do some work, I wanna have a good return on my investment of, the, of my time and stuff. Let's see. Is that going to? Yeah, that looks. Oh, maybe I need to take a little extra off. Take that last pad off because that looks like. Yeah. That looks. Yeah, one whole pad cut in half. Looks like the maximum that this is going to be able to hold here. I was. Uh oh. And I rolled it the wrong way. Okay. I rolled this the wrong way. So, we have to take this here, put this on this end, and roll this up like so, I think. And, yeah. Cut some of this extra fuzz off of here. Yeah, that works. I put that in there like that. And now we can tighten this down onto the squonk pin. I think that caught. I think it might have actually come off. Yeah, it did. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the you-know-what to do. Okay, sorry. Keep forgetting about keeping it on camera here. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's biting now. It's biting, it's biting. And it's also riding up. This cotton is riding up here. Okay, so this is the first time I'm playing with this, so this is a learning experience here. There we go, that's tightened on. And I think we need to bring this down. We'll try and bring it down a little bit here. And, because we don't want all this cotton like sitting up here at the top, we want to have some of this down here toward the bottom. I don't think we're going to need to worry about that drip, that, that juice well down there, that drip well. Because with this squonk pin, bringing the juice up here directly and applying it to this wick. There we go. Uh, okay, that's tight, that's tight. see. Uh-oh. I see what's happening here. So we put that on there like that. And we 
tighten this on like so. There we go. Nice and tight both ways. Okay, so we got that on there. We got that on there. Okay. That's down toward the bottom there. Okay, so let's do the mesh now. And I said I wanted to do 9.5 9 millimeters, so that's 10, 9.5 would be there. And you could probably do this with a regular metric ruler, but I'm doing this here with, with my caliper since I got them. So we want to put that and make a mark there. And oh god, I'm marking up my brand new build mat. Uh, okay. The ink is going right through the mesh and is going right onto the build mat. Ah! Brand new build mat. Okay. Well, it needed to get christened sooner or later. Alright, so we got that there, got that there. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to need this whole length, but I'm just going to cut it anyway. Okay, so put that there. And... <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, that's good. Put that over there. And let's break out the ohm meter here. Pop this on here. Make life a little bit easier. <laughs> As he says with a laugh. Yeah, right. Okay, so screwdriver up oh, wrong screwdriver. I need Phillips here now. <clears throat> Yes, that's absolutely correct, Stephen. I don't have to oxidize this mesh because I'm using cotton as the wick. In a Genesis-style atomizer, um, the wick actually is the mesh. Uh, okay? This is actually acting as the coil, from what I gather. Okay? This is actually going to be your heating element here, as opposed to in a Jenny where you would have a coil actually doing the heating and the mesh would act as the wick. This is actually acting, this mesh is acting as the coil and the cotton is your wick. <clears throat> so we tighten this down like so. All right, I got a little piece stuck out there so that way I can have that. And then we're gonna take this and I'm going to loosen this up here. I'm going to wrap this around like so. Um, takes practice. Don't have to oxidize. Love that build mat. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, I actually designed this build mat myself. Um, spent almost... The, the first one I had, I spent like about uh, a month and a half. That's the one that had the... The, the, the semi of lay, uh, uh, excuse me, semi of daisies on here, the one that had a really hard time seeing that they were daisies. Uh, when I decided to uh, rework the logo for the channel, I, I cut down the number of daisies on here. And I had to do, redo the build mat. So, Okay, so we gotta cut this extra piece off here so it doesn't short out on this other side, like so. And then we gotta cut this off here. Yeah, so that way we don't have any possibilities of any kind of shorts, short skis happening. And here comes the bikes. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we got that there. That's like that. That's actually looking pretty good. Let's see what we kind of got for a... Let's just make sure we got these things tightened down here. Tight. Tight. 
tight on tight. Okay, let's see what we got for ohm reading. 0 0.18, 0 0.179, 0 0.18. Wow. That is going to be interesting. That is going to be very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I have to do some research on Wix. On the, excuse me, mesh. And see if they have mesh that actually has a higher ohm reading. Uh, yes, definitely low ohms. Definitely low ohms. So this is going to be an interesting little experiment here. So let's put that on there. Okay, put that over there. Uh, let me see. I need a 510 drip tip. There we go. Put pop that one in there that works okay so let's get some juice here I want to juice this little bugger up and see how this thing works put some juice on this wicking and This is actually a lot less cotton than I saw some of the um, other guys use. So, yeah, I want to make sure this is juiced up real good here. Okay. And now one of the things I noticed about this, well, first off, there's, as you can see here, you have uh, air holes here, 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 and here. You don't have any air holes on the back. That corresponds with these two posts. So you're gonna be, we're going to be putting the air hole here on like so, and like that. Alright, so pop that there. Pop this onto the squonk mod. And pop this bottle off. I think this is what they call a super soft bottle. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm I'm relatively new to squonking. I'm not a big dripper guy. I'm a tank guy. So this is like a totally new adventure playing with this kind of stuff. And like I said, I've never played with mesh before in my life. So this is like uncharted territory here. Not to mention the fact this is a 1.8, 1 1.7, 1 1.8 ohm, excuse me, uh, 0 0.17, 0 0.18 ohm build which is pro a lot lower than what I normally do. I normally have not ever gone down below 0.2 uh, usually vape at 0 0.4, 0 0.5 yeah I usually vape around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 myself so this is like this is like uncharted territory here uh Let's see, I'm just trying to keep up with, see if what I got here in chat. The juice maybe brings up the, uh, the ohms up. Well, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, this is a totally new concept design here from what I've seen. And, or it may be an old concept that somebody just decided to, um, decided to renovate and bring into the, Oh yeah, we've got to put it in this way first because otherwise this thing has a tendency of munging up wraps. One, two, there we go. Oh uh, no, we're going to take this out of you know, power. 
60 watts. No, I'm bringing this down to my usual 45 first, and we'll see how that goes. And according to this, it's saying that the, the ohms resistance on this is 0 0.27. So maybe you're right. Oh, 45. Let's take this off and see how the squonk works. Oh, squonk works nice. And with those extra holes in there, that means that that cotton is going to be very well juiced. Just have to keep in mind the air holes here. Okay, 3.52 volts, 45 watts, and 0 0.27 ohms. Okay, uh, let me put my other mic back in. There we go. Shut this one off. And let us switch back over to the regular face cam. There we go. Okay. And let me bring up the nice big chat window here so I can see what it is. Because that chat window that's over here, uh, right next to my picture, is so small I cannot see diddly. Uh, usually very 0.4 to 5 ohms. Uh... Oh, yes, it is. We have Zap Out in here. This is another gentleman. Thank you very much, Zap Out. Uh, the juice, maybe bring up the ohms. Yes, need high drain batteries. Yes, these are uh, Sony VTC5s that I'm using in here. Um, can use regular batteries at 0 0.25 or higher ohms. Yes, uh, 0.34 ohms is okay for regular 1860s. Um, or 0 0.35. Yes, hello, Zap Out. All right, now let's see what we got here. So, like I said, I'm putting this at 45 watts. This is 3.52 volts at 0 0.27, or at least this has its 0 0.27. Just put that up there so you can see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, if it's going to be able to focus. Focus! Oh, it's not going to focus. Okay, what the hell? All right, let's try this. Oh, works pretty good. Let's bring it up to 50 because there's very little flavor there. Oh, that's much better. Squonk. See what we got here for look on the coils. Uh, coils, look on the coils. Duh! I'm saying look on the coils. Look on the mesh and see what kind of juice we got on the wicks. Okay, I just over squonked this. This has got a nice big juice well down at the bottom. I think I may have to put some cotton down there on the bottom of that juice well to bring up any kind of over squonk up to the wick itself because otherwise that's going to be used that's going to that juice is just going to stay there and it's going to be useless this thing is a bit of a whistler okay already squonked now the flavor is there i brought it up from the 45 up to 50 Let's bring this up to 55 watts and see if the, see how the flavor goes. 55 watts, 3.89 volts, 0 0.27 ohms, according to the um, the Steam Crave uh, Squonk mod. Oh yeah, there's the flavor. Yeah, that's the flavor. So you can't run it at 45. You got to run it at 50 or better. Now this thing only goes up to 60 watts. So, uh, all right, I got it at 55. Let's bring it up to the full 60 and see what it says for itself. First off, let's just check the wick. The wick is starting to get a little bit dry. 
This thing uses a goes through a lot of juice here. Okay, squonk. Squonk. I think there's gonna there's a little bit of a design problem with this. That the pin goes all the way up here to the top and it comes out over the top of the pin. Let me go back over to the build cam so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, how's the flavor compared to a, reg a regular coil wire? It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, this is the... The flavor I get off of a regular coil on the first time I'm running it is... It's a little bit more flavorful for a regular coil, but this isn't too bad. Let me go over here. I want to show you what I'm talking about. Hold on a second. Now, let me bring this over. I want to bring the, get the properties up here for this thing. Bear with me for a second. I got to bring the zoom up here. I want to zoom this thing in. And let me get that out of there where is that there's the controller all right bring the controller over there okay there's the mod let me zoom this in and that's as far in as I can go okay so watch what happens when I hit the, when I squonk this Juice comes up, it overflows the top, and goes over the top of the coil. Now, that flows down over the mesh, and down, you see it's going down into the bottom there? Now, I don't know how good this is going to be because it's got holes in here uh, along the side of the, the, the coil itself, uh, uh, the, the, the coil of the, um, the wicking. I don't know how good that's going to come out. If it's coming out the top here, then it may not be coming out those actual holes because of the resistance of the cotton. So you may have to put something into the top of this to force the juice out through those holes. All right, let me come back up to the face cam here and bada bing. Okay, let me bring the chat here. There we go. Okay, so let's put the top back on here. And 60 watts, 4.06 volts, 0 0.27 ohms. 0 0.27, that's not bad. I can actually work with that. That's, that's 0.2 is about as low as I've ever gone before. So let's see what this is, tastes like now. Um, let's see now. Uh, how do you adjust your ohms with the mesh when building? Um, that I'm not sure about. That I'm not sure about. Uh, it may be because of, maybe you put in more cotton and then have the uh, more mesh in there that will give you a higher ohmage. I'm not sure. Now, remember Zap Out, uh, this is a... I've never played with mesh before. This is the first time I've ever played with mesh. B, I just got this thing in this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, this is a first play with this thing, so I have no idea what's going on with this. Um, I just wanted to bring this to you guys as I'm playing with it so you can see what I, the way I normally work with stuff. Um, less mesh, more less mesh, more rooms. I would think more mesh, more ohms, because now you have more wire uh, in, the, in the mesh to give you more resistance to your current. If you have less mesh, that means there's less metal, and less metal means lower ohmage. That's, at least that's the way my professors at DeVry taught me. Um, if you want, if you turn around, if you have a length of wire, it's going to be one, you know, one ohm resist one ohm uh, value. 
If you cut it shorter, you're going to have less, uh, less wire, therefore less skin resistance, uh, less metal resistance, therefore lower ohmage. Okay? Unless my, my professors were a bunch of lying sacks of... I'll let you figure out the last word I was going to use there. And they never turned around. They never steered me wrong there. Um, the more the wire, the more the current flow, less resistance. Mm, no. Never worked with mesh either. Very interesting. Yes, it is. This is, this is, let me see what this thing tastes like. <coughs> that did not taste like a dry hit. That tastes like an overly wet hit. Let me put my finger on top of that. Hmm. That is a little on the warm side. <coughs> I was like it was a little too... A little too... <laughs> <coughs> Yes, that is something I am definitely going to have to verify through experimentation. And when I do do the review on this, that is something I will turn around and I will make sure that I mention. <sighs> yeah, okay. That's, I was just looking at the other mod. This is the Vandy Vape Kylan I was working on. <coughs> some of the uh, Bill Camp footage for this thing um, yesterday. Uh, I have a lot of editing to do on that because the rough footage that I filmed when I was working with this came out to an hour and seven minutes. Yeah, I got a lot of work to do on that. A lot of... Yeah. Um, okay. So that goes there. Let's see what we got. Wow. Now that tasted like an almost dry hit. I think you need to have that pin open there at the top to have the juice flowing over the top of it. So it's, some of it does flow over the mesh. Because otherwise you start getting that dry. That that one definitely tastes. The last one I took definitely tasted like almost a dry hit. But there doesn't seem to be any discoloration on the cotton there. Underneath the mesh. Doesn't seem to be any kind of discoloration. And squonk a little. Let it flow over the mesh. Let's try this. Yeah, you definitely have to have that pin open at the top so you can get some, some juice flowing over the cotton. I think I might have turned around and made that cotton ball a little too dense. So, yeah. And yes, dry hits do suck. Big time. Oh. <sighs> Come on, guys. Get off my tea. <sighs> Ant attack. <sighs> this is the tea. This is my tea that I take to work with me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, that tastes much better. Well, let me let me seal this up before I wind up having little critters going inside my cotton and getting caught inside the cotton. That would not be good.
That's on the verge of a dry. Um. <clears throat> okay, so this thing takes a lot of juice. This thing takes a serious crap ton of juice. And I think I might have wound that cotton a little too tightly and a little too densely. <clears throat> this is going to take some experimentation. <clears throat> mm. to get this right and definitely I'm going to have to put some some cotton down there in the bottom of that juice well cuz there's um there's a lot of juice down there in the bottom of that juice well <clears throat> and it's just sitting down there it's not coming up it's not getting wicked up okay all right so we got this thing full open now, this thing's not whistling quite as badly as the one that I saw that, that, that Grim had. Uh, the one that Nick had was a do real dog whistle. This isn't too bad. It's a little loud, but it's not that bad. And it does put out some nice clouds. I'm afraid that the, all this vapor going out the, the screen window here, somebody's going to think my f apartment's on fire. Uh, yeah, I need to fluff out the cotton the next time, definitely. Because I, I made this thing <clears throat> a little too tight there. That's a little bit too tight. That needs to be a lot fluffier. So, yeah. Oh, gee, thanks, Zap Out. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm glad at least you guys are having a good time on my on my behalf here. Thanks. Much appreciated, guys. <clears throat> yeah. But this is definitely an interesting little mod. Uh, let's get the RDTA. I'm just brain dead today. Damn. The flavor on this thing is actually pretty good at 60. Actually, I might want to... Let me try bringing this down a little bit. Back down to 55. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is I'm in Jersey, North Jersey. Billy is down in PA. He's not going to show up at my apartment. He's going to sit there and go... Let him burn. Not my job. Bye. Yeah. Besides, he likes his job too much. He's liable to turn around and take out my entire apartment and not even think about it. <coughs> I can understand. He's a fireman. You know, I used to be an EMT over in New York City for uh, a couple of years, and I had a lot of dealings with um, the, the firemen over in... Um, over in the city. They're a good bunch of guys, but they really take their job to heart. Yes, they do. I can attest to that. We had a fire in our house back in 86, and the place looked like hell in a handbasket after they got through with it. Mm. Not going to get into that. But, you know, hey, that's part of the job. What can I tell you? All right, so that's the... That's the Cito... Um, that is the Cito RDA slash squonk RDA. Your horn blows, do you? Jesus. That's one thing I hate about summertime, having the windows open and everything else. Everybody and his brother is like making noise all over the place. <clears throat> Anytime I can get peace and quiet to make a, make a video is during the winter time. Okay, so I guess I'm going to chop off of here. It's almost 7 o'clock, and i got to turn around, and i got things i got to do. Uh, got to get some food in the tummy before I turn around and uh, before I hit the sack. Because i got to be up at 4 in the morning, um, be in by 7, and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> guys, it's been fun. Steven, thanks for showing up, mate. Zap out. 
Great that you're here. Thanks, mate. I appreciate you being here. <clears throat> like I said, this was just a off the top of my head thing. So um, appreciate you stopping by and seeing some of the things that seeing some of the behind the scenes stuff that I do when I'm working with something new. Um, the kind of craziness that I have to deal with when I'm trying to figure out something absolutely, totally new that I've never played with before. So having said all of that, thanks a lot, guys. You take care. And um, this is probably going to be up for review in about maybe, I'd say about another two, three weeks, maybe four weeks. I'm, I'm not sure yet. So guys, take care. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand. And may him be having a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Have a great one, guys. Uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks for being here. Uh, greatly appreciated. I'll talk to you again. Have fun. Bye for now.